Welcome to my kitchen, everyone. As I explained, we have a special guest in the house this week, and he's going to be showing us an alternative to our traditional Thanksgiving stuffing. Welcome, Chef Miles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So what are you going to be making today, exactly? So today, I'm going to be making, um, it's a stuffed oyster, I mean, it's an oyster stuffing. Okay. So it's a little different from your regular stuffing, it's just, you know, adding nice fresh oysters with it. Okay. It's something that, you know, my mother used to make. So, you know, tis the season, you know, for family, you know, and food. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of both. You know, this is something that, you know, my mother made every, th um, every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, you know, for people that don't know, you know, I lost my mother and my grandmother last year to COVID. You know, so even though I know she's looking down on me, my brother, and our other loved ones, you know, all we have is memories. So today I'm going to share a memory that we have of my mother, which is our oyster stuffing that we have for the holidays. And I am absolutely honored because your mother was one of my most favorite people, and I loved your grandmother as well. So, this is very special for me. Thank you so much. Sure, no problem. Okay, let's get into it. All right. All right. So, right now what I want to do is go over the ingredients to just let you know <clears throat> what we're going to be working with today. So, of course, you got your stuffing. You need your bread. So, we're going to be using a French baguette. Um, it's a uh, very nice, sturdy bread, uh, very rustic, you know, but like, you know, with any stuff and any bread that you want to use or like you can you know if you want to use brioche or even if you have um some hamburger buns or hot dog buns you know you can cut those up and use those too so it doesn't really matter today we're going to use the baguette stuff um also with your bread when you cut it up you also you want to make sure that you leave it out uh so it can get a little hard a little stale if you cut uh press for time you don't have to do that. You can just cut it up, pop it in the oven for um, maybe about five minutes so it can get nice and uh, firm because that's what's going to absorb all of that liquid that we're going to use for our stuffing. Uh, these baguettes already have been set out, so they're already a little uh, firm. We're also going to be having, you're going to use celery, green onions, some fresh thyme, some fresh flat leaf parsley, some onion. We're also going to be using some dry ingredients. We're going to be using some dry thyme, some dry rosemary, and some sage. Now, if you got fresh rosemary, by all means, you can use that as well. Um, so for our stock, we're gonna be using uh, it's a it's a chicken it's a chicken base, it's chicken bouillon. It's it's actually better than those little cubes that you use. It gives you more flavor. Now these things you can get in the market for maybe about five dollars. They they actually come some come with low sodium, and also you know I'm very. Uh, I really feel like if you know you, you need to make your recipes your own. So let's say you can't you don't eat chicken. You know what I'm saying? You can use what we also have here. Is they have a sauteed onion base. So like if you're vegan or vegetarian, you know, you can make it your own. You don't have to use the chicken stock. You can use a vegetable stock as well for your uh, for your base, for your stock. We're also gonna be using butter, some fresh garlic. Salt, pepper, we have some breadcrumbs, and of course we have our fresh oysters. Uh, you can get these in the market, you can get select, or you can get standard. The select seem, you know, is a little bit bigger. Um, we're going to save this juice. This is called uh, oyster liquor. So we're going to use this in our, uh, in our stuffing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna drain this. We're gonna cut down the oysters, 
and uh, we're gonna incorporate everything together. So you're also gonna need a strainer, a bowl, you know, um, measuring cup. Uh, we're gonna use the pan to spray our pans, make sure nothing sticks. Um, and so right now we're gonna go ahead and get started and cut our bread. Also, you wanna um, put your oven to 350 degrees. You want that to be nice and hot while you're preparing everything else so you can just pop your, your food right in there. So right now we're gonna cut our bread. Make sure to be careful. And so what we're gonna do is more of a rustic style. So that means, you know, it doesn't have to be uniform cuts. So with the bread, you know, you can you can start small and work your way up to big. Always make sure you tuck in your fingers when you're using your knife. If your fingers are tucked, then that means that you can't cut your finger. Can't cut your fingertips. See? Can't cut your fingers if they're tucked. So uh, with the baguettes, you're gonna need about two and a half. So like I said, it's, it's no real set size to cut your bread. But you want some of them big, some of them small. Just like if you were making a fire, you know, you got to have some small pieces of wood to start your fire. And some big ones to keep it going. And you wanna have your bowl nearby. Cause when your cutting board starts to get crowded, you can go ahead and take some of your baked bread, put it in your bowl, cause ultimately you're gonna be mixing everything in the bowl. So we got one break, one down. So what we want to do, we want to start our stock while we're doing everything else. Okay, so take a tablespoon of our our base and what you want is you want about three cups of water now so now we have our stock started. Now with the stock, you want to start getting your dry ingredients in there. So it's about, 
about a teaspoon of the thyme. About a teaspoon of the rosemary. And it's about two teaspoons of the sage. So we got that in our stock. That's going to start coming to a good, nice boil. And then we can keep going with our bread. So while we're doing this, just to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, like I said, my name is Chef Miles. Uh, my company is Miles Catering. And I started the company in about 2010 because uh, I wanted something of my own. I have been chefing for over 20 years. Kind of like um, I started in like uh, high school, working at like Chili's and things like that. And I just kept getting cook jobs. And then I decided, you know what? I'm gonna keep, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. I went to college, uh, culinary college, and I got a degree and professional cooking and baking. <clears throat> and once I did that, I started going to a little bit more prestigious schools. I mean, uh, prestigious jobs, like working at um, golf clubs and resorts and things of that nature. Tell me more about some things you're gonna be doing in the community coming up, because I know you do a lot of community service, as I call it, giving back. Yes. Okay. So coming up, right now I am partnering with a couple people. Um, I have somebody that I know called, um, her name is uh, Miss Ujima. And she kind of had me, and she, she introduced me to the people at WEAA uh, 88.9 Morgan Station Radio. And... Um, I've done a couple things for them, and like far as their fundraisers and what they and whatnot. And so this coming uh, Thanksgiving, we're gonna be frying turkeys down at the stadium, down at um, M and T Bank Stadium. So if you want your turkey fried, you can bring it down to the stadium with some seasonings, and you can give it to the chefs. There's gonna be some chefs down there. And we're going to be frying turkeys for the people that want their turkeys fried. No charge. Um, also, every month, I have a couple of chefs that I work with. Um, Chef Bond Key, Chef Mijo. We, every month, at the end of the month, uh, the last weekend of the month, we're down at the Shot Tower and we uh, serve food to the homeless. So, every month we're down there. We also have uh, been doing uh, a couple things up at the at the new Cow Hill uh, Rec Center in and uh, where is that at um, Walbrook Junction. So um, we're gonna be doing a couple things there. You know, we've also done some some food drives. So if you wanted any, you know, fruit, vegetables, dry foods, you know, we give them out to the community as well. Um, I feel like my 
my brand, Miles Catering, I want that to be a part of my business. I don't want to just be known for knowing how to cook. I want to give back, you know. It, it brings me a lot of joy just cooking for people that, you know, not able to or don't have the food to cook, you know. So it's, it's more than just knowing how to cook something fancy or something nice. You know, I like to give back to the community because that's what we need to do. We need to look out for each other. And with this pandemic that just hit, you know, it really puts a lot of things in perspective for a lot of people. Because nobody is promised tomorrow. Now, you also do some services that are more um, private and intimate. Because I had you for my last birthday. I had a private meal at my home. And you came by and cooked for me and paired it with a great bottle of wine. And it was an awesome experience. Can you tell people more about that service that you offer? Absolutely. So, I uh, also do a uh, private chef where I do intimate dining. And what it is is that we'll have a consultation. Um, if you're having a special day, a birthday, anniversary or just you want to have a nice night big night maybe you know I can come into your home you don't need anything you don't even need pans I bring my own pans I bring the food I bring the candle lights you know I bring the wine I bring the wine bottles I bring I even bring the ice you know so I'll come into your house come into your kitchen cook you up a marvelous dish um, it's a three course meal. You know, I'll bring the tablecloths, the flowers, everything to make your night like very beautiful, extravagant. You don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to clean up anything of that nature. We'll set up a menu of what you would like for your three courses. I'll come in, make it. You guys have a wonderful night and uh, I'll be out your head and you can enjoy the rest of your evening. So, yes, I have that service. It's called Intimate Dining with uh, Miles Catering. So if you give me a call or look me up or a message, you know, we can start a consultation and we can get that going. But that is an awesome, awesome thing that you need to uh, look into for your next date night or your next anniversary because I'm telling you, those things are great. So we're almost done here. We got two, I'm gonna do another half, and then we're gonna move on. We got our stock, our stock is boiling, and that's what we want. We got our stock boiling with our herbs in it. And like I said, this, this bread that I'm cutting now has already been set out, so we don't need to put it in the oven. We can just go ahead and start putting things together. Now, I know a while back you have been doing some cooking uh, classes virtually. Are you going to be getting into that more? Yes. Uh, I will be getting back into my cooking classes. Uh, I was actually um, offering a Zoom class uh, every Thursday. And what we would do is we would cook. You know, I try to keep it traditional. Because I wanted to cook. I wanted to teach things that are... Very traditional, like chicken marsala and, you know, veal scallopinis. The things that, you know, are very traditional, traditional dishes. Um, I also have things that I do um, that are more custom. Like, I have a bougie catfish dinner. That is a fried catfish with shrimp and... Um, crab meat but 
you know, I, I teach those in a Zoom class. I'm going to be getting back to that. You know, that's another thing I do. I also do Zooms for our young and upcoming chefs, for the kids. I did a Zoom camp class for uh, a camp. Um, I will be offering uh, Zoom classes for the young people as well and show them the fundamentals and things that they can do all the way down to people that might need help with the stove up into the teenagers that want to cook something nice for the parents. So all of that, I do it all. Just give me a phone call. We can always have a consultation. You know, everything is really custom. So whatever you want to do, we can make it happen. So we have our bread already done. We're going to set that to the side. Any little bread crumbs that you have, you want to keep those. That's what's going to help bind. That's what's going to help bind this stuff. So you want to keep those. Now, we want to start with our vegetables. We want to take our stock and put it, keep it low. If you want it nice and hot, but you don't want it to evaporate. So now we want to start our vegetables. You want to turn your pan on low to get it nice and hot. You want to start with a half a stick of butter. Now, like I said, this is all rustic, so there is no right or correct um, size to cut with your things. Your vegetables with your bread, you just want to cut it, get it all together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to sweat our vegetables, which means we're just going to lightly cook them just so they're more translucent or clear, so they won't be raw. So you're gonna take your onion, remember to tuck your fingers, just give it some rough chops. to be a master chef to make this dish. You know, all you gotta do is just cut up some vegetables, some bread, oysters, add some herbs, seasoning, and a little bit of love. So we have our onions. I'm gonna throw that in there. I don't know if you can hear that sizzle, that's what you want to hear. You don't want nothing burning. You want that nice sizzle. Make sure you get your trash out of your way. I always say when you're, when you're cooking, keep a bucket, a little small little bucket. That way anything that's trash or, you know, skin that you don't need, you just throw it right in your bucket and keep your, your area clean. So we got our celery. We're gonna take off about three stalks. We're gonna give them a wash. All right, so we're gonna cut these ends off, toss them to the side. We're gonna split the celery down the middle. Like so. Always make sure you're aware of where your fingers are and where your knife is. You also don't have to be fast either. Take your time, make sure you do it right. And that's how you put your love into your dish. Got our celery, 
pulling that right in there. Now we have our green onions. So what I like to do, when you get a bunch of green onions, they give you two rubber bands. I'll take the top one off, I'll leave the bottom one on. That bottom one is gonna help you, it's gonna help hold it together so you don't have onions running all over the place. We're not gonna use all the way to the bottom anyway, so it's good, it just keeps, it just helps you out. Slice it down. And if you do get to your, you just take the rubber band off, a couple more slices, get rid of your trash, and then we're going to add this to our vegetables. Now the more vegetables that you put in the pan, the lower the heat gets. So we're going to turn it up just a little bit. And then we're on to the next. So next we're going to take about three cloves of garlic. The best way to peel your garlic Sit it on the uh, cutting board, take your knife, smash it down. This does two things. The first thing it does, it helps you peel the garlic right off. It comes right off. The second thing it does, it, it flattens it so you won't be trying to cut a piece of garlic that's rolling around on your cutting board. It'll stay put. Like everything else, get your trash out of your way. And you want to go ahead and try to cut these as small as you can. So we got everything going. Get our garlic in there. Boom. And we're almost finished our vegetables. We're going to throw our herbs in there now. So you want to take your time. And you don't need a lot. But this is what's called layering your flavors. You got time in your stock. You got, you're going to have some time in your... Uh, your vegetables, if you can get the time and just run your fingers down and it'll come right off, it'll come right off the stem. That way you're not having a bunch of stems in your food. You can have more of the leaf where the flavor is. Comes right off, just run your fingers right down the stem. Okay, now that we got that done, go ahead and take your knife, get a nice rough chop. Throw it in there with your vegetables. Now, when you get your parsley, it's going to come, it's called a bunch. You want to take about half the bunch. All you want to do is just grab the top of the leaves and just rip them off. 
You're not gonna really need those stems. We're using flat leaf parsley because it has a little bit more flavor than the curly leaf parsley that you normally see for decoration. It's still a mild flavor, but it's just more flavor than its counterpart. So we're going to chop this up. It's going to give a nice color along with the flavor. Take that. Boom. Throw it in there. Now you want to, we already got time in there, so we're just going to take a teaspoon of rosemary. And like I said, this is called layering your flavors, where you don't just flavor one thing, you flavor everything. Two teaspoons of sage. You want to do like a like two teaspoons of salt. Now the salt that I use is pink Himalayan salt. This is a better brand. This is a better salt to use. It's a healthier salt than your iodized table salt. So if you're going to use salt, try to use the Himalayan salt. Same thing with your pepper. You want to get yourself a pepper grind. The objective is to always use fresh ingredients. Fresh pepper, fresh herbs, fresh everything. It gives you such a better flavor in the end. So now that we have all this together, we're gonna take a spoon and we're gonna just mix it all in. In a minute, you should be able to to smell all of this. It's gonna look very nice. I'm just sweating this down. And again, you don't want this too high because we're not really, you don't want color on it too much. You just wanna, um, you just wanna sweat it down. So I guess about uh, low medium. You can even put low, just so we can sweat it down. Okay, now we got our vegetables done. Next thing you want to do, we're going to mess with our oysters. So, you can actually take your pot. You can take your pot off of the heat. Put your strainer on it. You're gonna take your oysters. What I have here is, uh, I think it's 12 ounces. 12 ounces. Now I told you we're gonna keep our, our oyster liquor. That's gonna give us more flavor, our oyster flavor. And our stuffing. Take this, put your trash out the way, and you want to grab your you want to grab your kitchen shears. So what you want to do is you want to cut your oysters while they're draining because when you cut them, it's gonna it's gonna produce more liquid. And we're just cutting them down a little so that you have more oysters all through your stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be little itty bitty pieces. Just cut them down just a little bit more. Now, are these oysters raw or? Yes. Yes, they are. But you but know what? You can cold. also use, if you can't find raw oysters or, you know, you can also use the canned smoked oysters as well. You can use them both. Or you can just use them as a substitute. But yes, you want to get fresh raw oysters. You know, and you can get them at your local market. 
Now, are they ultimately going to be cooked, or do they remain warm? Yes, they're, they're going to be cooked. They're going to be cooked twice, actually, because we're about to throw them in here. We're going to throw them in here with our vegetables. So now you got your you got your oyster liquor and your stock together with the herbs. You got your uh, your actual oysters, your raw oysters in the pan with with your vegetables. And what we're doing is we're just giving them like a quick flash cook. We're just giving them a quick flash cook. So we're not trying to cook them all the way through because they're going to cook all the way. You're going to cook the rest of the way through in the oven. So when you start to see them kind of like plump up, like I'll show you like, like see this one is kind of plumping up. You'll see a couple of them plump up and they'll start to curl at the end. That's what you want. Now at this point, we have everything, everything that we want in our stuff with us. So now what we want to do is we want to start assembling. So you get your bowl, you get your bowl with your, your bread, and you get your oysters, and your vegetables. All right, so you want to turn everything off. Now what you could do, you can get a spoon, a big serving spoon, or you can get your gloves and put some real love into it. Now with this, you got to be careful because things can still be a little warm. So, just want to make sure you're getting everything together. So I suggest if you're doing it with the gloves, that you wait till things cool a little or you just go ahead and grab a spoon. Okay, now, when you're putting the stock in there, most likely you're definitely going to want the spoon because, number one, the stock is going to be hot. Number two, you want to do some mashing. Just want to make sure... and soaked up. And you want it to be wet. it down, get it soaked up.
So this is supposed to it's supposed to be moist. Now, if let's say you put too much um, stock, you can always use breadcrumbs, and breadcrumbs is also gonna is gonna help bind it. Not too much though, because you don't want to end up being too dry. But you can always fix a problem like with this. Just add some breadcrumbs, and that'll soak up some extra stock. Now that we have everything mixed, everything that you don't need, you want to go ahead and get it out your way. You want to grab your pan and you can take your pan, give it a nice spray around it so nothing sticks. And then what you want to do just want to just start putting your, your stuffing right into your pan. Now this recipe should feed about 10 adults. But as you can see, you're gonna have some nice, you have nice color in there. Looks nice and full. You got nice chunks in there. You can get that out your way. We're gonna press it down a little. And at this point, you're almost finished. So, you got your nice rustic bread in there. You got your herbs. You got your vegetables. You got your nice, juicy oysters in there. And you got that oyster liquor in there that's just running through that bread. So, every piece of that bread has oyster flavor in there. And that's what you want. And you got it in your nice pan. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this up. Now you have your oven already set at 350 degrees. So that's ready to go. When you're covering something up also, you want to grab your pan and you want to give it a spray. That's going to stop anything from sticking to the roof, you know, and messing up what you're cooking and how it's going to look. So at this point, we're going to put this in the oven, and it's going to go in the oven for about 40 minutes. So we're going to put it in the oven for about 40 minutes. Now, after it comes out the oven, we still got more work to do. And what we're going to do then is we are going to top it off with some more butter and let it brown for another 10 minutes. So I have one here prepared that we're gonna top off. So you grab your other stick, your next stick of butter. I'm just gonna add little knobs of butter to it. So as you can see, it's nice, steamy together. You can see some of the bread is starting to brown a little bit. And then what you're going to do when you put this butter on there, number one, you're all ultimately going to give it just a little bit more flavor. Mm. 
Now, while you're doing this, you want to go ahead and turn your, your oven up to about 400 degrees. And then you're just gonna pop it back in the oven and it's gonna brown. Now, if, you, if you're running out of time, because it's all fully cooked, if you're running out of time, you also can use your broiler and just brown the top. But putting it in for another 10 minutes on the 400 is just gonna ensure that everything is fully cooked inside and, you know, all together. And it's just, you know, better love that you're putting into the food opposed to trying to rush it. You don't really want to rush your food because that's when accidents happen. That's when ingredients get left out, things of that nature. So while that's in the oven, this is your time to actually get your station clean, you know, that way, once the food actually comes out, you don't have a bunch of stuff to clean up because it's already clean while you're cooking. But this is something my mother always made. Like, I looked forward to oyster stuffing. I didn't even know about oyster stuffing. The only reason I knew about oyster stuffing is because my uncle... He didn't eat pork or anything like that, so he wanted oyster stuffing. So every time he came into town, he would get made oyster stuffing. Then when we tried it and loved it, because my brother likes it as well, my mother just started making oyster stuffing for us too. So every occasion, we had stuffing. We had two different stuffings. We had a regular stuffing, and we had the oyster stuffing. So I always love this oyster stuffing. Anybody that uh, ate with my family and my mother, they know that she makes a killer oyster stuffing. And she makes some stuff other, other than oyster stuffing that, that is just out of this world too. Like her, her seafood salad is out of this world. You know, she makes, she makes cranberry sauce from real cranberries instead of the, the can. She gets fresh cranberries, puts them on the stove, and we get real cranberry sauce. And, you know, that's just something else that she does every Thanksgiving. So, um, these memories that we have, you know, especially with me being a chef, you know, I hold on to these things. And I also like to share them. That's why I think this is a great opportunity that I have today that I can share something that I got from my mother, you know, that that I can pass on that people can remember just like I do. So I'm telling you, if, if, if you want this recipe, you can get it. Um, just hold on to this recipe, hold on to uh, memories that you have so that you can pass them on. I'm gonna pass this on to my son, you know? So that's, that's, that's how we keep our loved ones alive. Once we take it out the oven, you know, you got your nice, you know, uh, your, your browning to your, to your bread. You're going you're gonna to let it sit for about three minutes, just so it can firm up a little bit. We've let it sit, and then you want to dig in. Just going to grab some. And like I said, it's oysters all the way through. And then you have my mother's seafood, I mean, my mother's oyster stuffing that we have every holiday. 
smells delicious. That's real good. I can taste all the different flavors and the herbs. That is so good. So yeah, it's real important, like, once it comes out the oven, to let it sit for a minute, let it firm up, get, you know, and, and then dig in, you know, so it can be, uh, it's one of those dishes that, you know, if it sits, it gets better and better. You know how, like, you make potato salad, and you put it in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow, potato salad tastes better than what it did when you first made it. This is how this is, you know. Once you take it out the oven, you got that nice bubbly crust on there. You let it sit. The same way you don't let, like, a lasagna sit, you know. And bring it over to the dinner table. And by the time everybody's digging in, it's all come together. And it's just wonderful. You know, like I said, you're going to cook it, cover it for about 40 minutes. And then for the last 10 minutes or so, you bump that heat up so you can get that brown over top. Everything is cooked all the way through. Everything was really cooked all the way through before we put it in. We just, you know, made a marriage. So thank you for having me on here and um, letting me um, share this dish that my mother has left for us with you guys. Absolutely. Um, once this cools down, this plate is going to be clean very quickly. <laughs> Listen, so this is your treat. You can have this, you know. And um, next time, if you want me to come and do another dinner, or if you want me to bring another dish, I can show you another dish anytime. Okay. This was so much fun. I'm so glad you came. And I have a little piece of your mom with me, I feel like. So... Thank you. We're going to um, put a link for the ingredients so people know exactly what you used. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Yep, yep. And, and if anybody wants to reach me, you know, this is Chef Miles, Miles Catering um, on Facebook. Uh, my business page is Miles Catering. Um, I also have a Facebook group called Miles in the Kitchen. Uh, if you're uh, on Instagram, you can look me up at Miles Catering. You know, so um, if you want to get in contact with me, you know, you can just uh, message me through there. You know, I'll respond back and I follow back. So thanks again for having me. Sure. Thank you. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on On the Couch with Tea. Thanks.